From New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And uh, Dominic Carter here with you. The number to reach me this hour, 800-848-9222. Former President Donald Trump doing an interview with Elon Musk. And a lot of interesting topics came up. One, the former president calls Kamala Harris a third-rate phony candidate and says Biden might not have an IQ at all. 800-489-222. This is how, this is how Elon Musk started his conversation. I think really it's essential that, that uh, you win for the good of the country uh, for this election. And I mean, that's understating my opinion. And Trump, in before the event began, released a commercial on X on Twitter. Now project the winner of the presidential race. Donald Trump wins the presidency. What started off as unlikely, impossible, is now reality. I will fight for you with every breath in my body, and I will never, ever let you down. We have a president who actually fulfilled the promises he president made during Trump the campaign. campaign. Securing the border to foreign policy. He now has a record as president that's pretty damn impressive. Breaking news out of Paul The FBI Beach, has executed an unprecedented search warrant at President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. The former estate. president has both sides of the political aisle up in arms. It is a arm. dangerous and unstable moment in American history. The Justice Department has just indicted former President Donald Trump. For seven years, they hated him, they targeted him, they hunted him. This is the epitome of the abuse of the prosecutorial power to preempt political decisions. I never thought anything like this could happen in America. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. And that was part of the Trump commercial that he put up on X. He went through a lot of topics uh, in the interview with Elon Musk. The number to reach me right now live, 800 848 Nine two two two. We'll begin with your calls in just a moment. We see them coming in. Another topic that Trump mentioned, uh, talking about the former, the current president, that is President Biden, declaring that he has a low IQ. To happen with stupid people like Biden, you know, Biden uh, did something with Russia. Uh, there was no chance of him ever going in. And when I left and then I, then after I left, they started forming big armies on their on the border with Ukraine. Right. And I looked at that and I thought he was doing that because Putin's a good negotiator. I thought he was doing that to negotiate. But then Biden started saying such stupid things. For instance, he said that uh, it can be a NATO country. Now, put Russia for for as long as there's been NATO has said we're never going to agree to that. And we go right up front and say that. And we did things and said things through this president with a low IQ, very low IQ. He had a low IQ 30 years ago, by the way, but now he might not even have a IQ at all. There is no there's nothing on the board that goes this low. He said things that were so stupid that 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 war would have been that war had zero chance of happening if I were there. Zero chance. He was saying everything the opposite. Everything the opposite. And it's so sad because many more people have been killed in Ukraine than you read about. You don't read about how bloody it is and how desert. Hey, look, just in the two armies, you lost a half a million people. And so Trump in the interview in the call with Elon Musk declared President Biden is, uh, and I'm quoting here, close to vegetable state. Elon Musk himself revealing that his mother's friends have been attacked in New York. Elon Musk telling Donald Trump that three, three of his mother's friends have been attacked in New York while walking down the street, but says they have not and did not go to the police because the criminals would walk free anyway. 
again stating that uh, the, his mother's friends did not report the instances because they know, in his words, the police will not prosecute the offenders. So Elon Musk also, and I'm about to start with your telephone calls, uh, declaring that Kamala Harris would cause economic ruin, quoting uh, Elon Musk. Her dad is a Marxist economist. That's how she was brought up. That's from Elon Musk and Trump himself declaring that the illegal immigration situation has overwhelmed New York City, citing the recent brutal rape of a 46-year-old woman Sunday at Coney Island, allegedly by migrants, and uh, he slammed Vice President Kamala Harris's performance as Biden's quote-unquote border czar. And so, uh, the former president, as you might expect, tearing into Kamala Harris, who he will face November Fifth, and he's calling her again a third-rate phony candidate while citing crime and the Big Apple associated with people who cross the U.S.-Mexico border illegally. And so let's begin with your telephone calls. Let's begin with Mike in South Carolina. Mike, what's on your mind? Hey, good morning, uh, Dominic. How are you? Um, Good morning. You know, I gotta, uh, I gotta uh, give you and Rita uh, a combination, one-two combination. Fantastic. You know. Um, well, uh, I, I was gonna say, um, you know, Joe Biden wants to go on the uh, campaign trail with Kamala, Camilla, however you pronounce it. You know, what, what a joke this whole thing is. She's nothing but a devious liar, flip-flopping all over the place. And I said it on your show, Dominic. I'll say it again. Uh, instead of, uh, you know, uh, former presidents getting these elaborate libraries, I have the perfect uh, structure they can build. Uh, JBO, Joe Biden Outhouse. That's what they should do. You know? <laughs> and Hunter and all the other cast of characters, his wife, his, uh, you know, all the other characters. Maybe they can, you know, uh, they can... Uh, initiates the outhouse, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike, I want to, are you in a supermarket right now? No, I'm at an ATM right now, believe it or not, and this thing is beeping. Oh, okay, because we can hear it loudly in the background. Okay, I'm sorry. so I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. So, so what I want to do, I want you to stay with me, and I want to yeah. bring in Stephen on Long Island. And, okay. uh, and it says here on my screen, at least, that Trump's comments on Harris uncalled for. So, Mike, you stand by for a second. Stephen, yeah. what's the point you want to make? Yeah, it's cool that what he said about Vice President Kamala Harris is untrue, uncalled for, unprofessional. There's no reason to just sling mud. Not at all. But that's the way oh. your boy is. That's what you like. Okay, all right. So I want Stephen, I want you and Mike in South Carolina, you guys on opposite sides of this presidential race. I want you guys to make your case. So, uh, uh, Mike, I want Stephen to listen to you, and then Stephen, I want you to listen to Mike. Mike, go right ahead. Thanks, Dominic. Uh, Stephen, you sound like a rational caller as opposed to some other, you know, irrational callers. My case is I've been around 70 years. I've never seen the Democrats act the way they do and what don't people understand what we're going through do you not understand that we're in the abyss because of joe biden and now camilla harris two you know devious uh, uh democratic uh donkeys and that's what, the way i feel donald trump our economy the state that we were in when he was in office it was fantastic wasn't it the interest rate was 2.5 now it's seven and change and, you know, it's just they just don't know you even acknowledge it like they're oblivious to what's going on. And, you know, uh, Joe Biden does not have the mental capacity to do anything. That's my point. I mean, okay, so, uh, OK, so, Mike, wait, hold on. Let's let Stephen yep, respond. Yep, yep. You, you said a lot there. So let's let's let Stephen go ahead and respond. Yep. Well, I think he's, 
incorrect. Joe, President Biden, and Samara Harris, the vice president, they know what they're doing. And we're going to win. Okay, Vice but Stephen, wait, 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 Stephen, you, Stephen, Stephen, you keep saying you're going to win, but you say very little beyond that. So can can you I'm elaborate? Okay, not, okay, you're not, you're okay, okay, Stephen, explain. Stephen, Stephen, I want you to respond to what Mike just said with substance. I uh, please, I don't just want to hear we're going to win. That's what you always say, but you don't back it up with anything. That's absolutely incorrect. You didn't let me finish. She has a coalition behind her. It's electrifying. That's what you always That's say. Windy. And then you say the black but coalition is behind I'm, I'm her. You, okay, I'm but you can that. you respond to Go what on. Mike just but, said? Okay, Mike, Mike, do you feel he's responded to anything you said? Not at all. He's uh, speaking with empty words. And again, what don't you understand? Wake up and smell the coffee. The state of affairs, the border, everything. We could be on the brink of World War Three. Okay, everything. You know. So, what is it that you re don't really grasp and understand? Because you're uh, you're fixated with with Joe Biden and Kamala. For what reason? What reason? Because they've done a great job. Oh, they've done, they've done a great job. I'll give you some examples. They with uh, insulin. They decrease the insulin. It's affordable for people now. You have more entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs that are in the country right now. So the really? economy, yes, yeah. really. And I, I don't, I don't buy, I don't buy that, Stephen. I, I, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. I, 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 I agree. I agree. I agree with you. Do your research. I, uh, okay, I agree. Stephen, listen, I got to be honest with you. I'm not going to be able to continue to take your calls if you're never going to be able to give me some substance. Now, you're right on well, the I'm insulin. Uh, you, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me finish, okay. Stephen. You're okay. right on the insulin costs that have come down under Biden. And I guess, I guess in a backhanded way, we could give Kamala Harris a little bit of credit for that. But you, you, you know, Mike is asking you some straight up legitimate questions and you're not answering any of them. So what I'm going to ask both of you to do is hold on with me for a second. We are going to yeah. take a break. We're going to come right back with Mike in South Carolina, Stephen on Long Island in just a moment. Stay with us. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And we are back. Talking live with Mike in South Carolina, Stephen on Long Island, the two of you guys. I want you guys to address each other. And uh, all I'm saying, Stephen, I respect your calls, but it, you, all you keep telling me is we're going to win and that Kamala and Joe is great. You did give me one example this morning of insulin. That's a good example. But anyway, so I, I guess... Uh, uh, Stephen, you go first this this time, and then Mike will respond to you. Okay, Mike. Why would you want to vote for a 34-count felon? Twice impeached. Also, 40 people resigned. Also, a person that talks about COVID putting bleach on your body. His own college doesn't recognize him. The University of Pennsylvania. So why would you want to vote for a person like that? Tell me, Mike. You, tell me. Okay, slow down. And don't talk over people. This ain't your show. Okay, it's Dominic's show. And don't talk over me and step out of my words. Okay? That's the best you got? Really? Kamala Harris and Joe Biden? Hey, you know what? Wake up and smell the coffee, like I said. You see what's going on? Do you see what kind of climate we're in? And she turned her back. She was supposedly the czar of the border. And now she, you know, she gives a deaf ear and a blind eye. And you know what? That was all for gazy BS stuff that the Democrats brought against Donald Trump. And he stood tall. He stood firm. And he deserves to be 
the second, you know, second term he's going to win as president of the United States. The Democrats, each and every one of them, are, are conniving thieves and devious liars. Okay, and that's the best you got, Stephen, about you know Biden and how can I vote for Trump? I vote for him twice. Okay, His, those charges were bogus, bogus. Okay, that's the best you got. Go ahead, I'm listening. Absolutely not. He was convicted by a jury of his uh, peers. Okay, all right, but Stephen, but Stephen, but Stephen, 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 here, Stephen, here we go again with the broken record. This is what the reason true, why Dominic, the, the reason. True. Wait, wait, Stephen. The reason why I asked another caller to come on is because you run these same tired lines to me. Stephen, you're a smart guy. You have to know that with the Supreme Court ruling, that case is going to be overturned. So for now, for now. Trump is a uh, can, has been convicted in a court of law on 34 counts, but that's for now. The other cases against him are falling apart, just like this one's going to fall apart. But Stephen, again, I, you know, I, I I enjoy chatting with you, and I thank both of you guys for your call. Thank you very much, and have a good night. I enjoy chatting with you, but you've got to bring some, put some meat on the bones if we're going to discuss and continue to take your telephone calls let's go to steve in newark new jersey steve what's on your mind dominic you look at Kamala with the open border her and, and joe biden they're holding hands they do everything they have to do to open that border and leave it wide open then she becomes a slipper into this i am the nominee and then they bring this old white guy from, from, from a black community. And what does he do? Remember that little 12 year old girl that was shot in the head in her house. Why two hooligans were out there having a shootout. You know, these so-called good citizens, these young boys, 19 years old, convicted by a convicted by a jury in his state. And he released them. He released that young man, and that young man came out and was locked up with a gun and drugs and released with no bail. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. He comes back, Dominic, and he's, and he's released again. I, I hear you, Steve, and we will continue with your live telephone calls when we come back. 800-848-9222. From New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And uh, the news uh, as of this hour, former President Donald Trump doing an interview with Elon Musk on Twitter, on X. One of the topics, in fact, the first one to come up, Elon Musk asked Mr. Trump about the assassination attempt on his life. So excited to endorse you as uh, the, the, the president of the United States for ha having another term here is uh, that was that was just incredibly inspiring. But but I mean, what was it like for you? Not pleasant. I, have not to be pleasant. I said there was blood. <laughs> I, had more blood. I didn't know I, had, I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get hit. But uh, in this case, it was probably the best alternative you could even think about because it went at the right angle. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a hard hit. It was very, uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I, I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear, yeah, and because uh, it, you know, it hit very hard, but hit the ear. And I also heard people shout "bullets, bullets!" Uh, you know, get down, get down, because I, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly, and we had bullets flying right over my head after I went down. So I'm glad I went down. 
the the bigger miracle was that I was looking in the exact direction of the shooter, and so it hit it hit me at an angle. And let's now go back to your telephone calls from around the country, Gracie, in Rockland County, New York. Gracie, what's on your mind? Hi, Dominic. What's on my mind is this: number one, the only thing that Steve said that uh, positive about Biden and Camilla is the insulin. Correct. Okay, but all of us don't take insulin, and I want to know if these people are actually who take insulin are saving more money than what they're spending on everything else: the food, the gas. All right, that's what I want to know. You got to weigh things. Also, other things he said, uh, I I don't, I wasn't even sure. With if I think he meant inflation. When Trump left office, it was two percent inflation. He said it went down. Of course, maybe it went up, but it went up during Biden, and now Biden brought it down a little bit, but it's still not the two percent. Okay, job creation. Um, jobs were lost during COVID. When the first three years before COVID, uh, unemployment was very low under Trump. All right, there was loss; it went up. But the jobs that Biden brought back were the jobs that were lost originally during COVID and also the creation of more uh, government jobs. Now, the people households, uh, 17, I said this once before, $17 trillion in credit card debt, families in the United States. I don't know how we're ever going to get uh, uh, um, you know, past that, how uh, that uh, that debt is ever going to go away? And uh, and I'm not even talking about safety on the street with uh, local safety, New York uh, and the big cities, and fed- forget about what's going on in the country, uh, national, uh, internationally with Russia, China. Well, things are a mess. I I think these people are ridiculous. And then the 34 indictments. Okay, the indictments, if you don't realize that was trumped up charges, I hate to use a pun, but that was a kangaroo court. Also, the, the um, uh, uh, what do you call that? Well, well hey, Gracie, l- 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 let me just say this. So, so Stephen means well. I can tell in his voice that he's a good person and he means well. But what bothers me is I strongly believe a lot of people, the Stevens of the world, that they're going to vote for Kamala Harris and they really don't know why. They're going to vote for her because she's a woman of color. And I mean, you know, if I'm one of these voters, I'm going to say to myself, well, wait a minute now. This lady won't answer a single question from the press. This lady has not done a single news conference. Everything she does is on teleprompter. I would have a tremendous problem with that. But but you, you just heard Stephen. He buys into the okie doke of she was a U.S. senator. She was the state attorney general. She was the she was the district attorney and he and vice president. And he and and other voters believe they're going for the okie doke. They believe that's enough. That alone is, is is enough to simply put her into into the White House. Are you concerned about that? I am very concerned about that because that's what you just explained. Uh, obviously, what you're saying is ridiculous. Look at the country. Uh, I, the inf- I mean, I'm not going to repeat everything. The country is in a mess. People, I went to the store yesterday. I have practically nothing, no meat, $75 on nothing. And I'm a good shopper, Dominic. And it's costing a a lot of money. If you don't have disposable income, you are in big trouble. All right? If you don't have disposable income, there's no way you could live. And that's why there's $17 trillion in, in debt. 
And uh, I, I, these people are ridiculous. They do not have good reasons. I don't care she's black. I don't care she's a woman. I Trump produced a good country. I want a good country. I was just saying today, when I grew up in the 50s, everything was wonderful. Uh, all, right, all right, we could do social issues, whatever. But you weren't afraid to walk on the streets. And you, right. and you were able to right. live. You were able right. to buy right. food. And I'm sorry. Thank you, Dominic, for letting me talk. But these people are so sad. I really mean these. You know what, Gracie? Just- I, I agree with you. I, I It really is sad because it, it amounts to and I'm really not trying to insult anyone. I'm really not. But it amounts to are you brain dead? Are, are you are you critically thinking? Are you thinking at all? Or are you just going for the lines, thank you, Gracie, of the uh, Democratic uh, Party? Are you just going for the okie doke? And then the Stevens of the world will be the same people to call me up two months after the election and complain that Kamala Harris is not doing anything. Let's go to Vincent in Brooklyn, New York. Vincent, what's on your mind? Good morning, Dominic. Dominic, and I'd like to remind Steve that Steve likes to say that Donald Donald Trump was uh, well, well, that he was uh, impeached twice. No, he wasn't because he wasn't convicted in, in the Senate. And these you're correct. He, 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 right. It was only in the House. You're oh, correct. You got to be convicted in both the houses, right. right, Dominic? Correct. Yes. Okay. Another thing. The inflation, what most people are not realizing, it's product dependent. If you're buying gasoline, there's an inflation of 75% on it. If you're buying some things, some food items, it's 50%. It might be 20%. They're talking about overall, but they leave out energy, they leave out uh, gas, and there's one other thing that in that inflation uh, basket uh, that they leave out. And even some people who, because of the high interest rates got their money in money markets or in high yield CDs what the money the interest they're making there they're losing to the high cost of food and the high cost of living I would vote for an orange juice can I don't care what color what shape what I, I care about the mentality. And uh, I want to say this to Kamala Harris. What about all the brothers in San Francisco that you threw in the joint for a couple of ounces of weed, and then you go on Charlemagne the God show, and you yuck it up talking about when you were in high school and college and cackling and how you were smoking weed and everything. How's that, How's that for uh, a role model? You're talking about smoking weed, even though you were a young lady. But then at least have, uh, how would you say, the modesty not to bring that up and insult all the, uh, the people out there, especially a lot of the African-Americans. And these trials that have been, especially the ones that are going on in Georgia, that's reminiscent of the hoodwinking they used to do to the black people in the South years ago. And everybody should see that, and everybody should be up in arms about that because that actually happened to whole swaths of the African American community. They didn't know they only allowed certain evidence in that they knew would uh, look bad for Donald Trump, just like they, they would do in the old South years ago. And that's all I have to say, Stephen. Wake up as a. Uh, as the other guy said, smell the coffee. Look at your wallet. Look, think about your kids. Think about your family. And and Gracie was right. In the fifties, you could go out without getting vicked and everything. Sure, there were social issues, but you want to know what? Eisenhower was the first one to start the uh, to, to bring those issues to the table about the inequality in the, the African American community. And it was the Democrats, the Southern Democrats, who put a wrench in the wheel. And it wasn't until later on that Martin Luther King had to sit down with LBJ to get it done. Well, Vincent, uh, you, 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 you brought up a lot of issues. And, um, you know, I, I just hope uh, if Stephen's still listening. Thank you for the call, Vincent. 
that he takes in mind what you and Gracie just said, but I don't think so. Uh, many, many Americans like him say they want to vote for her. She's a black woman and, and they think that she's the savior for the country. She hasn't answered a damn thing about anything and they're going to vote for her blindly. Let's go to Pete in New Jersey. Pete, what's on your mind? Hello, Dominic. I say that very often the obvious truth, if it if it is expressed gently and nicely, can be very, very funny. And Mr. Donald Trump is so clear thinking that he just looks at what the obvious is. It reminds me of the Bugs Bunny cartoon where Wile E. Coyote was dressed up as a surgeon and Bugs Bunny sees his tail dragging on the ground behind his uh, doctor gown and stuff. And it can be very funny if you just look, uh, if it's gentle and nicely uh, done. Uh, a second thought, Dominic, can you listen for a moment? I You, you have about a, a minute, but go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, two times elected president Ulysses Grant told his friends and family that everywhere he traveled in the world to meet dignitaries and all the people, he said all they wanted to know about was, was he friends with uh, P.T. Barnum, who was the most popular famous person in the world of the second half of the 1800s. That's mostly what they wanted to hear about. I, I, I don't see how that's relevant to, to the current, but thank you for the call, Pete. I don't see how that's relevant to the uh, current uh, election cycle that we're in. Let's go to Maura in Illinois. Maura, what's on your mind? Hey, Dominic. I've uh, been listening to the conversation with great interest. And, um, you know, um, as, as some people have said, look, not all Democrats are bad people. They're not evil. They're not horrible. You know, they're not uh, deficient in IQ. Um, it seems like we're kind of speaking in parallel things. Um, you know, we're more looking into practicalities and record of achievement. In this instance, it appears to be all emotion. And, and uh, you know, very... I guess if you get uh, stuff drummed into yourself enough times, um, you know, look, I, I hear the same things have been hurt by it, as you know. Right. Um, but, but Maura, but my thing is, right, vote, vote for whoever you want to vote for. But please don't vote for Kamala Harris and then call me complaining too much down the road because you feel like she's not getting anything done when I'm telling you in advance, that's what's up well, that. That's what's exactly what's going to happen. Um, I am so with you there. Um, look, this would be a worse, worst case scenario. I really, you know, uh, it's, it's, and it's in essence, um, I, I have no idea how she walks into this thing. with Dominic. I just, Amazing. With great, with great luck, she, she. I've got to take a, a break, Maura. But I thank you for the wonderful call. As always, uh, chatting with you, we. She's, she's walked into this with enormous luck, enormous luck. Uh, the fact of the matter is, she should have never been on the ticket to begin with. But as a woman of color, she made it to help Biden, and then Biden, she should have never been close to the White House. But then Biden, uh, because of health and, and age, could not go on. Democrats had enough with him. And despite Obama and others wanting to have an open primary, Biden immediately threw his support to her. And she's been smart enough politically to build the momentum. I've got to take a break. When we come back, more of your telephone calls. Stay with us, folks. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And we are back taking your telephone calls up until the top of the hour. Former President Donald Trump sitting down with Elon Musk of Twitter, of X, uh, a number of interesting uh, topics uh, coming up. 
Uh, Trump declaring the illegal migrant situation is overwhelmed. New York City. Trump declaring that President Biden is, and I'm quoting here, close to vegetable state. Uh, and Trump uh, calling uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris a third-rate phony politician. Let's go to Santiago in the Bronx. Santiago, what's on your mind? Dominic, it's, uh, I just wanted to comment about what Stephen had mentioned earlier with just mentioning that Biden was able to, uh, you know, lower the cost for uh, uh, insulin for patients, you know, who uh, regularly take that. And, uh, you know, not even in comparison to what Trump has done. I mean, Trump uh, was able to have the lowest inflation rate uh, during his term and, uh all the interest rates for first time home buyers, you know, was was lower than they are now. So like they're way, now who way are lower, way, lower. way lower. A, a lot of people are struggling to buy their purchase their first home now, you know, they, and, they and you, you know, that. Santiago. Uh, and again, I, I can tell Stevens a good man, but that's how you know that he's not making a decision based on logic. He, he, the interest yeah, he, rate alone for, for first time home buyers. He is a good man. I, 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 I do enjoy listening to his candor, um, but I will continue to say another thing. We weren't in any world wars. We didn't have to worry about uh, nuclear attacks or anybody flying uh, Chinese balloons over our country and trying to, uh, you know, spy on us. And does everybody forget that all of a sudden? The other thing is all the billions and billions of dollars uh, that we give to Ukraine. Every time this guy comes over, he's like the greatest salesperson for Ukraine. We just write him another check and write, where does that money come from, Stephen? Where does it come from? We just keep giving him billions of dollars. Like Trump said during the Elon Musk uh, interview, had he been in the office again, you would not have to worry about this fight with Russia and Ukraine because people were, people respect the strength that he showed for the United States. Now, aside from that, now, if Stephen has something, I don't know if this is true, and I'm just saying, if he has a problem with, you know, all, you know, race is always going to be a problem and an issue. We're always going to be having differences with each other, how we look, how we speak. But if he has a problem with something else other than, uh, you know, Trump, you know, than his policies, then he should just say, hey, look, I don't like this guy for, for these particular reasons. Nobody wants to admit it. This guy, you know, I don't want to go to the dinner with this guy or, or go out on a date with this guy. I just want him to run the country or even have a beer. He's blonde hair, blue eyes. He's rich. You know, hey, there are plenty of black men who are just, just the same who are rich. You know, it just if this was Herman Cain, I wouldn't care. I would still vote for him. You know what I'm saying? If this right. was Dominic it, it Carter comes down there, to whoever's best care. for the country. I would still vote. If he has a problem with maybe something other than the way he governs, and he should just say that. Take that chip off your shoulder. We're not Agreed. voting for gender. We're not voting for race. We're voting for policy and the best ideas. Democrats cannot run anything. They can't even, you, you see in the three and a half years, we're in all types of calamity. All right, right. I'll listen to what you have to say. Thanks well, so much, Santiago, Dominic. thank you for your call. I do want to apologize to Allen in Orange County. He was the next call. To all the folks that are on hold, I apologize. But I will be back 23 hours from now, same time, same station. Folks, I want you to do me a big favor. I want you to have a wonderful day.